Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Becca and I'm a first time mom to my baby girl, Ellison Rose. She is currently four weeks old and she's laying right here next to me. So if you hear little baby grunts, that's what that strange noise is. <laughs> but I'm really excited to share my C-section birth story with you guys today. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. So let's just go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna start with my last few appointments leading up to the birth because that's kind of where things changed a little bit for me and kind of took a turn. So it was my 36 week appointment. I went in for an ultrasound and I was told that my baby was breech, which she had been head down the whole time. I mean, right up until 35 weeks, she was ready to go. I was even having very mild inconsistent contractions very early on. So in my mind, I thought, you know, wow, this is gonna happen quick. She's gonna come early. Everything is going perfect. And so going in for that 36 week appointment, I was really shocked actually, because I was not anticipating to hear a breech baby. But I knew in the back of my mind that that meant a C-section. So I met with my doctor and she didn't mention a C-section at all that first appointment, but she suggested that I go home and try some spinning babies techniques. If you're not familiar with that, just Google it and it'll show you all these like yoga poses that you can do and things like that. So I tried literally everything. I spent that whole week from 36 to 37 weeks trying all the things to flip my baby. There would be times that she would get transverse and I could feel like she was trying so hard to get head down and then she would just spring back up like she just couldn't. And we even discussed with my doctor the option of an ECV, the external cephatic version. And it's basically where the doctor manually flips your baby. And it was suggested that I would get an epidural for this procedure. And there's some risks with it. It's kind of a 50-50 chance. And I just didn't feel good about it. So I passed on the ECV and thought, you know what? If I'm approaching 38, 39 weeks, and my baby still hasn't flipped back at this point, then I have to trust that there's a reason for that. So I really had to embrace that I can create the best possible environment for my baby to flip head down, but ultimately it's up to her. So I really just had to accept that. It was a really emotional week. I had spent my entire pregnancy preparing for a natural vaginal birth. So, to get to the end and find out that it was potentially gonna end in a C-section, I was not emotionally handling that well. <laughs> um, which, it's so funny because my entire pregnancy, I was saying, you know, when close friends or family would ask me, you know, what are you thinking for the birth? I would always respond with, I'm so open to anything. I just, uh, any whatever the Lord has for me, except a C-section. <laughs> That's what I would say to everybody. And so, Oh, you know, of course, that's how it would happen, right? So, but anyway, I get to the end and, you know, I come to my 37 week appointment and nothing had changed. My doctor said, you know what, let's go ahead and schedule a C-section. We can always cancel it though. So that was what kind of made me okay with scheduling it. She was like, you know, if the baby flips even day of, we will send you home and cancel the C-section. So scheduling it does not mean that it's set in stone. So we went ahead and scheduled it for 39 weeks and two days. She wanted it to be about a week before my due date, just in case I went into labor early. They did not want to risk me going into labor with a breech baby. So we scheduled it early and I was doing a little better emotionally at that point with accepting the idea of a C-section more so. So we get to my 39 week appointment and even still nothing had changed. And so by that point, I was very much at peace with a C-section. I knew that, you know what, again, there's a reason for this. There's a reason that she's breech. And I just have to trust the Lord that this is the best and safest option for me and my baby. So that was kind of where we were at leading up to the actual birth. So the morning of the C-section came, it was January 30th, and we were scheduled to arrive at 5.30 a.m. So we got up really early that morning, it was about a 30 minute drive, and we just took our time getting ready. It was really sweet, it didn't feel rushed or frantic because we were already packed, and you know, it just felt peaceful. 
So we just had a really sweet morning and we got in the car and played worship music and just talked and laughed and I loved it. And we pulled up to the hospital, there was nobody there. <laughs> and we walked right in and you know, I walk up to the counter, hi, I'm Rebecca Hart. I'm here for my scheduled C-section. It was really weird. And they were like, oh yeah, come sit down. We'll get your paperwork started, get your insurance info. And you know, so we sat there for a little bit and then they escorted us to the labor and delivery floor, which is where they got us all checked into our room that they were gonna do kind of like prep work and meet the nurses and the doctor and everything like that. So I changed into my hospital gown and I got my IV, they did some blood work and the nurses came in and introduced themselves and I got to ask all of my questions and it was just kind of this introductory time, I guess. The anesthesiologist came in and explained everything from start to finish. It brought so much peace of mind having him explain and kind of talk me through everything. I got to ask all of my questions and he was even kind of lighthearted, but in a professional way. And it really made me feel just so much more calm going into it. So that was kind of the first two hours basically it was just a lot of intro type things and meeting people and blood work and the IV. And I know I had to get a certain amount of fluids in before the actual surgery. So that was why they did the IV first thing. But that was our first two hours in that labor and delivery room. Next was the actual surgery. So this is where things started moving really, really fast. I don't know what I was anticipating, but things just moved really quick from this point on. So Andy stayed back, he changed into some scrubs that they gave him and they went ahead and wheeled me to the OR. It was about 7.20 a.m. and we went ahead and got started and I don't know why I thought that I would get to the OR and kind of just sit there for a little bit and they would kind of get their stuff together, but no, they were like ready to go. So I get in the room and they immediately have me get up on the operating table and I had to sit on the very edge of the table and they gave me a pillow to kind of hug and had me bend over. So I was kind of arching my spine so that they could clearly see all the vertebrae. And there was a sweet nurse who was standing in front of me holding my shoulders, asking me questions, asking me like, how many siblings do you have? Where are you from? And at that point, they had already started the lidocaine shots. And so I was so focused on that that I don't even think I answered any of her questions, poor thing. She was so nice and I just like completely ignored her because I was so just in the zone, like breathing through it. Um, the lidocaine shots were pretty painful. I would say that was probably the worst part. They did four lidocaine shots and it just felt like, felt like a bee sting, but then, a, like an immense amount of pressure in my nerves. I don't know how else to describe it, but it was like a sting and then a really intense pressure. So we did four of those. And then at that point, I didn't even feel the actual spinal block injection. So I'm thankful for that at least, <laughs> but the lidocaine shots were pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I didn't feel the spinal block, but I knew when it had happened because I immediately started feeling this warm, tingle go all the way down my legs. It was such a weird feeling. And really quickly they had me get my legs back up on the table because I, I mean, I started losing feeling from the waist down like really fast. So I put my legs up on the table and they lay me back and they get warm blankets and you have a pillow. They try to make it as comfortable as possible. And I, at that point, was feeling just basically like my legs were asleep, just that tingle feeling. I could still move my toes, you know, a couple minutes later. And I was really worried, I don't know why, this was the part I was most anxious about. I was really worried about the catheter. <laughs> I had never had, I'd never even been in a hospital before. I'd never had surgery before, any kind of procedure. So knowing that you have to get a catheter with a C-section really freaked me out. So I kept asking the nurse, okay, I, I can still feel, like I still have feeling, are you, are you putting the catheter in yet? And she's like, no, just hang on. We still have, you know, just a couple more minutes. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I don't know why it really freaked me out, but when I saw, they hadn't put the curtain up yet, but I could kind of see, of course my belly was in the way, but I could kind of see when they were about to start doing the catheter. And it, again, it all happened so quick. I mean, I felt like a tiny little pinch and that was it. So I freaked out for nothing, <laughs> but then they put the curtain up 
and um, Andy came in, so he was sitting on a stool to my right, and then the anesthesiologist was sitting to my left, and he was there the whole time asking me, you know, how are you feeling, are you okay? And the one side effect I had to the spinal was I was shaking uncontrollably. I was perfectly warm, like I was under all these blankets and everything, but my teeth were chattering. I couldn't stop shaking. It was it was really weird. I wasn't cold, but I just couldn't stop shaking. At that point, they confirmed one last time my name, birthday, and what procedure was about to happen. They did this probably a dozen times, and I kept having to repeat the same information over and over, but they did that one last time, and then they got started. And I knew the anesthesiologist kind of was able to prep me for what I would feel beforehand. So I, I knew what to anticipate because he, you know, just very clearly explained, this is what you're going to feel. This is what you should not feel. So I started feeling a lot of pressure. That was the one word he told me I would feel a lot and a lot of like tugging and pulling. It almost was if as if like somebody took your pregnant belly and like was pulling it side to side and like pulling it, pushing it. Like, I don't know, it wasn't painful, but it just felt like a lot of pressure. I could feel my shoulders were like moving side to side because that's how much pressure was going on down there. So Andy was sitting right there. Of course, he was talking to me about Disney. We were planning our next Disney vacation <laughs> during this whole thing. Only us, right? And the anesthesiologist kept checking in, just asking, you know, are you still doing okay? And so we just kind of kept talking. He kept me really calm, held my hand. And about eight minutes later, I could tell they were getting really close to being done because I could literally feel a nurse like pushing my baby. Her head was up by my rib cage again because she was breech. I could feel her pushing my baby down through my stomach. It was such a weird feeling. Like I could, I could feel the whole thing. And and so I could feel her moving all the way down. And so I knew, okay, she's about to, she's about to be out. And the first thing I hear is that is a big baby. And I feel them pull her out of me. And again, there was no pain or anything like that. I could just feel all the pressure from it. And I hear that's a big baby. <laughs> and they, you know, hold her up and I got to see her for the first time. It was such a surreal moment oh my gosh and they take her over to get some fluid out of her lungs and out of her stomach and that only took a few minutes they weren't concerned it wasn't anything serious um, but they just wanted to double check her and um, I'm thankful because the little table that they had her on was just a few feet away from where I was laying so I could look over and see her the whole time so they never took her out of the room or which I was kind of worried like you know, I wanted this really special moment with my baby, but with a C-section, it just looks different. And I'm really thankful that I was able to at least see her the whole time. Andy went over and took some pictures and, you know, it just was, it was really, really sweet. Even though I didn't get that first initial moment that I had envisioned with a vaginal birth, you know, it still felt special. And probably about five minutes after they got her kind of wiped down and got a little blanket and hat on her, they gave her to me to hold for the first time. And it was, there's seriously no feeling like it. You just can't explain it until you've experienced it. And it was such a sweet, intimate moment with me and my husband holding our baby for the first time. It just, oh, oh my gosh. So another thing I was thankful for was they let me hold her while they stitched me up the whole time. So it was a good like 20, 25 minutes that I was still on the operating table that they let me hold her. And uh, it was towards the very end, Andy ended up taking her um, while they had to get you know the rest of me kind of situated and closed up and transferred from the operating table to an actual hospital bed. So Andy left the room for all of that and he took Ellison with him out in the hall and, and some nurses were out there too. And this was weird, after they were completely done, um, you know, they're pulling your hospital gown down and you're just kind of like fully exposed to everybody. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, and they take like several people to lift you up off the operating table and move you on to a hospital bed. That was a weird feeling because you have no like literally no feeling from the waist down. So I'm on the hospital bed now and they wheel me out. Andy puts Ellison back on my chest and I got to hold her and they moved us back to that same labor and delivery room that we were initially in that morning. 
and um, and I got to breastfeed for the first time. That was something that was really important. I wanted to try um, before within that first hour. So I got to breastfeed her. I think it was about 40, 45 minutes after she was born that I got to breastfeed her. And that was so, so sweet. But sometime in the midst of all that, they had given me something in my IV, some very heavy painkillers, like some kind of narcotics. And it made me so groggy. I could hardly keep my eyes open. Andy has a picture of me holding Ellison and I'm just like laying there with my eyes closed because I just couldn't even keep my eyes open. And nurses were coming in and out, asking us questions and trying to talk to us. And I just kept thinking, just smile and nod, just smile and nod. Cause I couldn't like fully even engage in a conversation. I was so groggy from whatever medication they gave me. And I'm holding my baby thinking like, please don't drop her, please don't drop her. <laughs> Cause I couldn't really feel anything. And it was just, it was a weird two hours. Um, and then again, sometime in the midst of all that, they have a nurse come in and press on your stomach. And I had heard about this. I had heard that this was extremely painful, but I guess because you know the spinal hadn't completely worn off yet, I really didn't feel anything. <laughs> so it really wasn't that bad, at least the first two hours. And she came in to do that every 15 minutes. So they're basically just pushing on your stomach to get blood clots out of your uterus. And they gave Pitocin for my uterus to contract. So all of that was going on immediately after the surgery. And I really didn't, like, I just wasn't fully functioning properly. <laughs> and so, um, but I'm sure they do that on purpose just because there's so much going on and they're checking you and pushing on your stomach and doing different vital checks. And, you know, there's just so much going on in those first two hours. Um, so, it, you know, it's all kind of a blur <laughs> looking back on it. But after that first two hours was up, they moved us to another floor in one of the recovery postpartum rooms, which was basically just a smaller hospital room. And that is where we spent the rest of our time. My spinal block wore off, I would say about four or five hours after the surgery. So it was a while before I could even like move my toes. But about hour six, they came in and wanted me to stand up and walk for the first time. And granted, I still had a catheter in, I have my IV bag, I felt like I was hooked up to so many different things. <laughs> so they have a nurse come over and she's holding my IV, she's holding, or my IV bag, and she's holding the catheter in the other hand. And she's like, all right, let's go. And it was a pretty small room, but they just wanted me to walk to the door and then walk back to the bed. But sitting up, oh my goodness, Trying to sit up for the first time was so hard. And then trying to swing your feet over the edge of the bed to even just get up on the edge and like sit up, that was the hardest part. And then trying to stand, oh my gosh, it just, it felt like I had run a marathon and then did the most intense ab workout of my entire life and then tried to go for like a long walk. <laughs> That's what it felt like. And, but I did it and you know, you just take it really, really slow. It took me several minutes just to sit up, get my feet over the edge of the bed, stand up. I mean, that took a good five minutes. And then you're walking so slow, just barely shuffling your feet. And the nurse is right next to you holding all of your everything. <laughs> and you know, I'm walking and then they're like, okay, like that's, that's good for now. We can go get you back in bed. And so I get back in bed and um, spent the rest of the day <laughs> in bed. I was like, I'm not getting up again. There's no way. Um, and the rest of the day went great, um, mostly because Ellison slept the majority of the time. And then we just practiced breastfeeding every little while. And the nurses continued to come in every you know, 30 minutes to an hour. And as the spinal block and the painkillers wore off throughout the day, and they continued to come in and press on my stomach, it did get more and more painful. I really wouldn't say it was excruciating though. It really wasn't as bad as what people had made it seem to be. So I don't know if that was just my experience with it or, or what, but I really didn't think it was that bad. So if you're nervous about the, the pushing on the stomach thing, it's, it's really not that bad. So they continued to do that throughout the rest of the day, like every hour and 
and we just kind of hung out. My mom and my sister came that evening and it was so sweet. We decided to not have a ton of family come and we got to spend time with family afterwards once we got home, but I just wanted my mom and my sister there and I wouldn't have had it any other way. It was just so sweet having them there. I think because the whole experience was so emotional and so overwhelming that I think having a dozen people in and out of the room when you're feeling so vulnerable, I just don't think I would have handled it well. And so, you know, if you're somebody who's debating, should we have, you know, all of our family come, you feel the freedom to make whatever decision you think is best for you and your family. So that was one thing I was super confident on. I knew that that was gonna be the best thing for us. And I'm so glad that we made that decision. So. That's kind of a whole nother little tangent, but we, you know, my mom and my sister came, we got to enjoy the evening with them and it was so, so sweet. And then later into the night, you know, they keep coming in every hour or so. So you're really not getting any sleep, you know, maybe 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, but you know, we weren't really able to sleep a good stretch, you know, anything like that. But early the next morning, like really early, like 4.30 in the morning, they came in and took my catheter out and said, you know, sometime tomorrow, we'd love for you to shower and we can take your bandage off of your incision. And when she said that, I was like, what? You're gonna take my bandage off? There's no way. That like really freaked me out, like no. But I was like, okay, I mean, if that's, if that's what happens, I guess, I don't know. So sometime the next morning around like noon, I think was when we attempted to shower for the first time. And that was really, really, that was an experience. That was challenging. So I'm having to step over the bathtub, which was so hard. Andy's having to help me. And, you know, I can't really bend over to wash anything. So he's helping me. And it's a very humbling experience to say the least. And I think because I had low blood pressure and the water was pretty warm, it didn't feel hot in the moment, but I think combined with my low blood pressure, I ended up passing out in the shower and Andy was there and was like, okay, if we can just get you to scoot over just a little, I can get you to sit down on this bench and we can like lean you over. Luckily, everything was okay. It wasn't anything serious, but that was probably the most traumatic moment of my postpartum recovery experience. But we were, we were good. I got out of the shower, you know, got dressed in my own clothes, the whole thing, which felt so good and got back in bed <laughs> and we spent another two days there. So we arrived on Thursday morning at 5.30. We left Sunday morning around like 11. So we were there a good like three and a half days. And looking back, it felt like we were there forever. But I'm so glad we had that extra time just because we got to meet with the lactation consultants. I had more time to recover with the help of the nurses. And, you know, it was just, it was really, really nice to have that extra time with it being a C-section. So if you're debating like, you know, man, I gotta get home, I'm gonna be so much more comfortable there. I strongly encourage you, stay the extra day, you know, take advantage of the nurses, take advantage of people being able to really do everything for you. Because when you get home, you don't have that luxury anymore, unless you have, you know, a ton of family that are, you know, that's over helping you out and things like that. But I, I'm so glad we stayed that extra day. So we went home on that Sunday and it was, it was really, really nice to finally be home though. We walked in the door, my mom was there. It was just so, so sweet. And yeah, that was basically our whole experience with a C-section. Looking back, I am just so, so thankful, first and foremost, that we had a safe birth, that my baby was safe and healthy, and it really went great. I wouldn't change a single thing about it. The recovery was the hardest part, but the actual C-section and just the whole process was amazing. I honestly, I would do it again in a heartbeat, and I, I thought the, the whole experience went great. And I'm so thankful we had amazing nurses. The hospital was fantastic and we just loved it. And you know, I don't know what a vaginal birth would have been like, but the C-section really wasn't as 
traumatic as I think I had built it up in my mind to be. It just wasn't that bad. So again, I would do it in a heartbeat and we had such a positive experience and with it being planned, it was just so peaceful. It wasn't this emergency frantic scenario or anything like that. Um, we just, we loved it. Now that I am four weeks postpartum, I feel great. And the recovery has gone really, really well. I would say by one week, I was feeling way better. I was able to kind of stand up on my own and get around the house a little bit better. Week two, I was able to kind of get out and about. We went to Target and, you know, so by week three, week four now, I'm feeling so much better. I went on a long walk outside um, yesterday and it just, it was really, really great. And I just feel like recovery has gone really smooth. And it just, again, it hasn't been that bad. I think people like make it out to be like it's this really awful experience, but you know, I think it went great. And I just, I've had a super positive experience with the birth, a super positive postpartum experience. And again, I wouldn't change a thing. It's gone really, really well. So that is everything from my positive C-section birth experience. And I hope this was encouraging. If you are facing a C-section and you're pregnant, you know, I just hope this can be an encouragement to you because I remember searching for videos like this when I was pregnant and just being so anxious about it. So I hope this can bring you some peace of mind and hearing someone else's experience that was positive. So again, I hope this was encouraging and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're not already. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.